Thank you. 
friends, I invite you to take a moment and silence your cell phones before we begin. And then if you would, please rise as you're able. Good afternoon. I'm Greg Fenvis, president of Emory University. We are here to celebrate the life of Amy St. Pierre. And as I look around this concert hall, full of loved ones, friends, colleagues, leaders, members of our community, it's clear that she has left behind a profound legacy of service, compassion, kindness. She, in some way, has touched all of our hearts. I never got a chance to meet Amy, but I've heard so much about her and the type of person she was. She used her knowledge and her expertise to help others, both through her pioneering work at the CDC and in her daily life. She in every way embodied the Emory mission to serve humanity and that's no surprise because she was once an Emory student earning her undergraduate degree with honors right here. I must also mention while at Emory and throughout her life, Amy was an avid ballet dancer. In this venue, the Schwartz Center, where she performed as a student, was chosen by Amy's family to pay tribute to that important part of her creative life. 
I know she left her mark on this campus as a student and then later on, while at the CDC, she worked close, closely with so many researchers and scientists at the Rollins School of Public Health and engaged directly with our Rollins students, giving guest lectures and helping them with projects focused on her ex areas of expertise, maternal mortality. She was always giving back, always looking out for others with true empathy and selflessness. For this and much more, she will always be part of Emory University. This campus was once Amy's home, and this afternoon, please consider it your home as well. Thank you for joining us. I'd now like to welcome Reverend Rebecca Lamon, Senior Pastor at Trinity Presbyterian Church of Atlanta. Reverend Lamon is also an Emory alumna as is her husband, Joel Lamont, who is a professor in the Candler School of Theology. Reverend, Reverend Lamont. Thank you, President Fenves. We gather this afternoon in this beautiful space, in a theater that was meaningful for Amy at her own alma mater. It seems right that a space that helped to form her can now gather all the different communities that were hers. So we set this time aside as sacred. We're here to remember and to give thanks, to talk about Amy and the mark she leaves on us and on this world. We're here to celebrate the gift of a remarkable, beautiful person. But our hearts are heavy. We shouldn't be here. None of us ever imagined that we could be. We would much rather be laughing with Amy than remembering how funny she was, or planning an adventure rather than recounting one. We would prefer to be hugging her rather than holding each other up. Grief is a sneaky thing. It doesn't move in a straight line. It doesn't abide by our calendars or clocks or know what else we have on our minds. Sometimes it comes as the most joyful memory and fills us with delight. And sometimes grief feels like a punch to the gut. In this time and place, we may go through the full range of those experiences. May we let them come. May they honor the fullness of Amy's life and the boundless love collected in this room today. As we celebrate together, we will hear about how Amy built relationships and loved people and worked for change. May these reflections in word and in song and in dance bring comfort. May they root us in gratitude and shore us up in hope. I'd now like to invite Commissioner Greg Clay to bring a message from our mayor. Commissioner. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I have the honor and privilege of serving as the Commissioner of Constituent Services for our 61st Mayor, Mayor Andre Dickens. And while he couldn't be here today, due to international travel, he's prepared a letter for the family, which I'll read in its entirety. To the St. Pierre family, on behalf of the city of Atlanta, I convey my deepest sympathies to you and your family for the senseless and tragic loss of Miss Amy Pierre, St. Pierre. Our hearts are with you, your children, and all of Amy's family, friends, and colleagues as you grieve your loss. Atlanta still reels from the horrific incident that took Amy from us. As a fellow Atlantan, please know that I'm praying for you. As mayor, I want you to know that the Atlanta Police Department and our partners in law enforcement will continue to work to pursue continued justice. As we grieve, we also join you in celebrating Amory's memory and monumental legacy. Amy was a public health leader who saved lives through her work in maternal mortality and helped these uh, afflicted with HIV and AIDS, excuse me. 
She was a change maker who remained committed to championing social justice causes and equal rights for everyone. From our conversations, I know she was also a devoted mother to Lydia and Lewis and a supportive friend. She will be remembered for her energy, her keen intellect, and her sharp sense of humor. Amy greatly impacted the lives of not only those who knew her, but those who she aided in, the, in her, her pursuit of health care. Excuse me. This is a very emotional time. The city of Atlanta will continue to lift prayers for your family during this time. May God bless you and keep you. As a husband of a doctor who graduated from Emory, Dr. Shawnee Clay, my family agrees with you as well. And just know that the city of Atlanta, our mayor, Mayor Andre Dickens, will continue to be a part of this process, will continue to be a part of this fight, and the conversations beyond today in celebrating Amy and all of those that have lost their lives to senseless tragedies similar to these, we will not stand it in the city of Atlanta. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Commissioner. Our United States Senator, Reverend Raphael Warnock, has also sent words of support to this gathering, and I share those with you now. May 12, 2023, to all who have gathered to celebrate the life of Amy St. Pierre. As family, friends, and other loved ones gather to celebrate the life of Amy St. Pierre, may the memory of her indomitable spirit be a blessing during this solemn time. As a mother, daughter, sister, wife, and community advocate, Amy represented the best of Georgia and she represented the best of us through her everyday actions, which were guided by her courage and moral conviction. She dedicated her life to social justice. During her 38 years on this earth, she showed us that the fight for justice is rooted in love, optimism, and the belief that we can build a better world, and especially for the most vulnerable among us. Amy lost her life to gun violence, and my heart aches for her husband, Julian, her beloved children, Lydia and Lewis, and Amy's other loved ones who were now forced to make sense of this tragedy. As a pastor, I'm praying for all of you with my words and thoughts, but also by taking action, just as Amy took action in her professional and personal life for the many causes she championed. The battle may be difficult, the days may be long, the nights dark, but ultimately we triumph through our faith. And Amy believed, just as I do, that our responsibility is to continue bending the moral arc of the universe towards justice. Wishing you all comfort, and may we all carry Amy's memory forward as we keep working to build our beloved community. Sincerely, Reverend Raphael Warnock, United States Senator. We have heard words of support and pledges of action from those who represent us in our city and in our state. And now we will hear words of remembrance from some of the people who are closest to Amy. They represent each of the communities where she had deep roots, her neighborhood, her devoted friends, her colleagues and co-workers for good, and her beloved family. We will begin with Jamie Butler. I invite Jamie to come forward. need those few seconds right there, as I think many of us do. So at the beginning of 2020, the St. Pierre family moved to Orm Circle. And just to remind you, that was just before quarantine, which is like going to summer camp with someone for one summer and then end up being besties for a lifelong. So we got really close, really fast. And little did they know 
that when they bought their home, they also gained in a completely new family. I would like to ask now for all the Orm Circle neighbors to stand up at this time to be recognized. Yes, Lydia. <laughs> there they are, stay standing for a second. Even though you're hearing my voice and watching me get through this, know that the words that I'm saying, the sentiment, the content, is coming from every voice standing up right now. Thank you. You can be seated. For us, Amy has this way of speaking openly about high emotional topics, such as politics, racism, white privilege, mental health, women's health, gun control, and more intense topics like what snack you feed your kids. <laughs> but she did all of this without dividing a room. She never stepped on anybody's toes. And it's easy to have surface conversations. But Amy, as you know, Amy was different. She would lean in, she would ask questions, and she would listen for the purpose to grow from it. Amy embodied the value of celebrating people's differences and allowing that to be the very thing that pulled them together. She provided the peace amidst the emotional chaos. In Amy's honor, not to put more on you, but in Amy's honor, we challenge you today to withhold your I'm sorry's and to withhold your I'm sorry for your lost statements but yet instead, instead be brave enough to speak about the emotions that you're feeling because these are the times that Amy would patiently wait for you to find your words. And then she would encourage you to do the hard work by speaking up. So let's give that to her today. Let this be the time that you put your breath behind the words, behind the emotions that you feel and speak up because this is not a time to be silent. We need a change in our community. So let Amy's story, let her activist energy be the push to lead the change that you are seeking. So now I'm gonna step down from that tiny passion box and I'm gonna talk some street talk with you because this is where we begin the celebration. Our street has a WhatsApp chat. Oh, it does. And this thread blows up on a daily basis about all things in life, and I mean all things. If you can imagine it, we have talked about it. But there is a secret chat thread. Sorry, husbands, you don't really know about this, but it's called the Real Queens of Orm. And it's where the mothers chat privately to each other, and it is way more active than our WhatsApp chat thread. So you can imagine all of this. I don't want to divulge in Amy's secrets or anything, but I do want to share some topics that have been covered thoroughly by Amy on our Queens of Orm chat thread. This would be flat iron, flat iron hair emergencies. <laughs> you knew Amy and her hair. Amy and all of her book recommendations. Spices by the pound how to create a transparent jelly cake from mushrooms. Look it up, it's interesting. New kids on the block jokes, and she knew her pop culture, even the Vanderpump Rules scandal. Announcing that her kids have snacks for sale out in the driveway, but you better get there early before they eat all of their inventory. <laughs> how you could pay her by beer. <laughs> <laughs> she would post all of the voting condition reports and give main points to each person running in a nonpartisan way, though. She would give out awards for the best sidewalk decorations. She would list who was playing where in whose front yard and when, bike consulting, and how she lives with a male model with a neck injury. <laughs> There's a story there somewhere. But our favorite one, and what I'm gonna share next is Amy's direct texts, is this. <laughs> Imagine her texting this. <laughs> this, okay, <laughs> I'm just going, not laughing now. Um, this is a full mount on wheels. 
His name is Gary. Height, 60 inches. Length, 60 inches. Width, 30 inches. I have your attention, don't I? All right, who's in? We need Gary on our street. This seems like a steal. We could position it outside the kids' bedrooms one morning. We could park him up in that muffly home as a housewarming gift. Facebook market is great. I mean, it was just clothes and furniture years ago, but this is a great twist. And then silence for several hours. <laughs> the excitement had paused, and then she comes back on. It's been four long hours with no updates of Gary. I let the seller know we want him though, fingers crossed. Too soon to start petitioning the city to get a celebrity nickname for the street signs like Orm Circle, AKA Gary's Way. <laughs> I just snorted. Oh goodness, this text thread began a whole new tradition of, and just hang with me because this is a real story and it still happens, of sharing a taxidermy gazelle, horns and all, on wheels, named Gary, with all of our neighbors and dressing it up for every occasion, <laughs> whether it's for a laugh, a spook, or to feel to fill his Instagram page, which, by the way, is at Gary Gazelle, if you needed to look at this for proof. <laughs> and these are just the tips of the iceberg of how Amy infused our street with her funny, bright, cheerful self. She was a part of our daily life, and she was all in every day. So before the love of Orm Circle closes up, we do want to acknowledge that there are no words to rationalize why we are here. But we can, for a moment, observe how we feel. So I'd like to invite all of you, if you'll feel comfortable, to go ahead and exhale your breath. And together, we're going to inhale to hold that breath for a few seconds. So just exhale. Inhale to hold that breath. And then when you feel ready to release that breath, you're going to release it out your mouth with pursed lips, nice and long and slow. Don't worry, we're going to do it one more time. So in this next breath that you grab, just breathe all the way in, the biggest breath you've ever taken in your whole life. Take it in. And when you're at the top of the breath, just sip in a little bit more. Hold it. Soften your body. Drop your shoulders. Relax your belly. And when you're ready, release it out, purse lips, nice and slow and long. Take your time. You feel that shift in your body? Maybe even in the room? It's a little more calmer, maybe a little bit more present. So take a moment. Take in all this love that is here. That's the common thread, the love and Amy. That feeling that you have right now, that's Amy. That's how it feels to be with Amy. She was the natural balm to our parasympathetic system. She provided the peace amid emotional chaos. I want to thank Susie and Danny on behalf of Orm Circle for choosing to bring in such a beautiful light to this world. We are better for it. And to Julian and Lydia and Louie, thank you so much for sharing Amy's time with all of us in this room. This last line is just for Amy, but since you're here, you can listen in if you want. If you don't, just cover your ears. All right, Orm Circle, this is our voice. Amy? <sighs> Thank you for teaching us that life can be both meaningful and full of light. Love thy neighbor, and we love you. Thank you.
And next we'll hear from Caroline Teagle Johnson. is hard. It's a humbling experience to be standing in front of you today, but an overwhelming honor to be able to say some words about Amy. She and I first met when we were both in the seventh grade at Taylor Road Middle School. We got to know each other through another friend who lived near her in the falls of Autry Mill. While that girl and I have long since lost touch, Amy would go on to be my closest friend, the maid of honor in my wedding, and one of the most important and impactful people in my life. She was my first friend to have her driver's license and her own car. Frequently, there'd be a 32 ounce mega mug of Diet Coke in the center console, and she'd invariably have to move three sweaters and four tote bags off the passenger seat so you could get in. She'd toss them in the back, and we'd be on our way to wherever we were going. Many of my teenage hours were spent in her dark blue Volkswagen Jetta, heading south on Georgia 400, and listening to Ween at a respectable volume, because Amy loathed loud music in cars. We went to a lot of concerts with our friends, Music Midtown, Harvest Fest, Fish, the String Cheese Incident, or sometimes we just drive somewhere random to meet up with our friends who went to Milton and Roswell, to loiter like your typical teenage miscreants doing silly things for a laugh. Yet even, ooh, pardon me. Yet even in those days, Amy possessed a maturity, intelligence, and poise beyond her peers. We all admired these qualities in her and would have found her intimidating had she not also been so down to earth. Amy was as funny, self-deprecating, and unpretentious as they come. She was a quick-witted master of conversational humor and a virtuosic writer of letters and emails. When she was living abroad in China and Taiwan, she would send mass updates to avail all her friends of her recent life happenings, which included endless awkward interactions with the locals and tales of gastrointestinal woe of which she spared no detail. Our friend Melissa's email address was somehow misspelled in her contacts, so a woman in England who was the true owner of mellyb at gmail.com was an unwitting recipient of all this correspondence from the East. The woman later outed herself to Amy as receiving the emails by mistake, but asked if she could stay on the distro anyway. She was gentle and dignified in every area of life and guided by her unimpeachable principles and sound judgment when it came to doing what was right. And yet, she was never too honorable to share with me a penchant for celebrity gossip. The only two places I've ever seen a hard copy of People magazine are at my dentist's waiting room and at Amy's house. <laughs> she was a loyal subscriber for years and we'd always hash out the latest scandal du jour together. Beyond the stars, she had an otherworldly ability to keep up with the life events of almost every person she's ever met. There's hardly a time I visited her that she didn't ask if I remembered so-and-so from middle or high school. Usually I didn't, but Amy did, so she'd catch me up on the latest events of their life anyway. Amy's life was filled with accomplishments and adventure. That she had malaria not once but twice should tell you everything you need to know about how far she sought to step outside the comfort of her suburban upbringing. I'll never forget going to Chinatown together on one of her visits to New York. She scoured the neighborhood signage looking for a very specific regional cuisine she was craving. And when she finally found it, she ordered off the menu dishes for us in what sounded to me like fluent Mandarin. She insisted it was a little stiff and clunky, but it made no difference to me. I was blown away by her. Later, she'd settle happily into marriage to Julian and motherhood, a demanding career and community involvement and activism. In spite of everything she had going on, she had a boundless capacity to care genuinely for other people. She was a masterful cultivator and keeper of friendships. She, Desiree, Aaron, Melissa, and I had a group text thread. This is a theme 
I'm noticing. <laughs> that began in September of 2015, shortly after Amy gave birth to Lydia. Through this, she was a daily presence in our lives. And looking back through almost eight years worth of messages, she jumps off of the screen. I see her struggling to return to the office after maternity leave, being offered her position with the CDC, finding out she was pregnant with Lewis, offering wisdom, encouragement, and thoughtful advice when asked. There are also tons and tons of jokes, all of them hilarious, and when I tell you, not even one of them that I could repeat up here. <laughs> so you have to come and find me afterwards. <laughs> Some of my most joyful memories of the past decade center around Amy. A friend trip to Baltimore to visit Desiree and Natanya, her bachelorette trip on Polly's Island, her wedding, her baby shower, or recently the trip that she, Desiree, Aaron, Melissa, and I took to Portugal in March of this year. The trip was Amy's gift to us and I'll treasure those hours spent gathered around the living room of our Airbnb, just eating snacks and talking about our lives <sighs> after the day's sightseeing was done. I'm so grateful that we had that time with her. In the spirit of who Amy was as a friend, I'd like to call on all of us to stay connected in her memory, to check in more often and make an effort to stay up to date with what's going on in each other's lives. And most importantly, to continue in the years ahead to surround her parents, her brothers, and especially Julian, Lydia, and Lewis with the profound love that she engendered in all of us. They're going to need us. And that's the most meaningful way I can think of to honor the legacy of our beautiful friend. Thank you, Caroline. And Julie is our next speaker. Hi, my name is Julie Zaharados. I'm here to give Amy her flowers not only as a brilliant teammate, but as a dear friend. I speak for the rest of the CDC Maternal Mortality Prevention Team family when I say we cannot begin to express our devastation over Amy's death. She drove us to be good and to strive for equity and outcomes for all pregnant and postpartum people. Um, Amy's work was movement building incremental changes today, building toward major impact for years to come. And Amy had an orientation to the work, a way of working that focused on individual people and partnerships to make the most impactful change. Amy was truly exceptional, and she inspired others to achieve more than they imagined possible. Her ready willingness to assist others embodied the very spirit of commitment to public service. So our team is one of those places where people want to work. And I know that sounds weird, right? And, and when I tell you how great and connected our team is, uh, I'm telling you about Amy, because she made it so. She built connections across this great big agency and whenever I went anywhere with her, I felt like she knew all 10,000 people at CDC. I swear. <laughs> Amy relentlessly paid attention to how the CDC bureaucracy functioned and persistently demanded we all make it better. Her loss has been felt across CDC, many of you here today, and even those who didn't know her grieve for her. To shine a light on this, I'll share a few words from Amy's memorial article that was distributed agency-wide. So Amy was our team deputy and driving force. She was articulate, composed, professional, always encouraging others to answer the hard questions and do hard things. She was a mentor and made sure everyone felt welcome. She tackled management tasks with fresh eyes, kept the team organized, 
she wrangled the federal acquisition machinery with poise. And it is really hard, I promise you, it's really hard. And she did it with humor, kindness, and grace, patience, infinite patience. Um, Amy was a true Atlanta local who was very active. Among many amazing things, she fostered and adopted dogs. She commuted by bicycle. She danced ballet. She s swam in the wee hours of the morning. She participated in book club. She dedicated her life to positive change and social justice. We who worked closely with Amy knew she was special, truly the best of the best, as Danny and Susie said in the statement. And still we are overwhelmed by the outpouring of messages from health department staff from across the country, across CDC and other federal agency, and leaders of clinical and health equity organizations. Her impacts are far reaching and will be lasting. Here is just one example. The Pacific Island Health Officers Association will name their new fellowship in her honor, the one that she helped build. Here's what they said. For us here in the Pacific, she has left a legacy to continue her good work to address maternal and child health in highly vulnerable populations. We are determined and proud to continue her legacy by naming a new Pacific Public Health Fellowship program that she helped build the Amy St. Pierre Maternal and Child Health Fellowship in honor of her memory and legacy. <clears throat> so it goes without saying that it didn't take long for, for Amy to morph from colleague and teammate to feeling like a much bigger and meaningful part of your life and for me, like family. Amy was thoughtful. She paid attention. She was the person who knew what we needed before we knew we needed it. Whether it was dropping off a bag of puzzles and toys when a friend's kid was quarantined from pre-K during COVID, or a camp stove when it was 10 degrees at Christmas and I had invited over 100 people to my house, um, or dropping off my kid uh, when she hadn't been picked up from the dance studio last week. Thank you, Amy. She did it and didn't make a big deal out of it. She was generous with her time and she cared deeply. She fought for causes like energy equity. And she herself was a powerhouse she was a megawatt bulb that shone brightly in everything that she did. Uh, many people have talked about Amy and her light. Many of us appreciated her ability to bring levity to the most bureaucratic of spaces. In the formative years of our work together, there were only a few of us, and we spent countless hours on a multitude of issues. To Amy, no was never the right answer. Challenges energized her. She took learnings from every barrier we encountered. So when we started, there were just a handful of states using our data system, and now it is national. Tribes, territories, freely associated states are engaged with it. Her creative, resourceful, innovative, and strategic actions allowed us to achieve performance objectives that would otherwise be considered too difficult. Amy had a clarity of purpose and being in both her words and actions. Amy was informed and knowledgeable. She was always making book recommendations or sharing an article to read. She was constantly learning, teaching, guiding, and leading us optimistically to look to the future. She had a confidence and a way to bring people together with purpose and care to accomplish a task and to share space. Throughout this horrible time, I've thought to myself multiple times, Amy would know what to do. I wanted her to read this, but I mean, this, you know, I expect her to just walk around the corner and come in for a chat. And she would always share the best things. Uh, Lydia and Louis, your mom loves it when you score enough points for parent pie in the face day. <laughs> just send photos. Uh, Lydia, she loves how you read. She loves how you think. She loves how you leave post-it notes around the house. <laughs> Louis, she told me all about your birthday at the Orm playground and cracking open the dino eggs. You all have so many fun adventures camping and even made the paper throwing colorful powder for Holy and the rally for the forest. 
Yeah, you were in the paper, both of you. I saw you, you had the green powder all over you, yeah. <sighs> Julian, I have heard so many stories. <laughs> um, but you know what, what I remember most vividly was when Amy said, I, I didn't know about marriage until I met Julian. She said, I am happy to be married to him. She did. Uh, so much of the hard work that Amy put in to make the world kinder and more loved filled was to make the world better for the people she loved. Why the most clear headed, kind hearted person who always was thinking about others? We may never comprehend why someone who constantly worked to make others' lives better had her own life taken so soon. If she were here, she would know what to do, what to say, how to focus, how to keep going. Um, she was my person. She may well be your person too. In that case, she'll always be the voice in the back of our minds or in the parts of our souls letting us know what to do and how to do it. Amy, thank you for being so much to so many of us. You gave more in your 38 years than most of us can hope to give in two to three lifetimes. Amy's, may Amy's drive and compassion continue through us. What you see here in this room today is the true essence of Amy. Everyone here is Amy. This collection of people is the true measure of just how many people Amy loved and touched. When someone influential passes, we look to the people who knew them well to carry on their legacy. We are those people for Amy. Amy was not with us long, but she left an indelible mark on our world. We will miss our generous, witty, creative, and selfless friend and colleague. I just wanna say one more thing to Amy. Um, in the immortal words of Lou Reed, Oh, it was such a perfect day. I'm glad I spent it with you. May her memory be eternal. And finally, Amy's Aunt Susan and Uncle David. Amy was our beloved niece. She was someone you would say was beautiful, inside and out. Amy was brilliant, yet modest and unassuming. Loved, admired, and adored by so many. We watched her grow from the little girl with a heart-melting smile and food palette of only chicken fingers and french fries. <laughs> to a young woman with purpose and conviction who traveled the globe with a sense of wonder. Then on to becoming a loving wife of Julian and nurturing mom of two beautiful children, Lydia and Louis. Throughout her life, Amy was a devoted daughter, sister, and friend to countless others. We were in awe of the way she moved through this world. She was, in a word, remarkable. With the greatest of respect and admiration, we marveled at her, curiosity and love of learning, her zest for life and new adventures, as evidenced by the stamps that adorned her passport. Although we must be honest, we still cannot comprehend her fondness for camping. Her determination and passion for helping others and giving back, her fierce commitment to her work and its far-reaching impact, her unapologetic appreciation 
for People magazine, something all three of us shared. <laughs> and most importantly, an infinite love for her family and friends. There's a Jewish text that is dedicated to honoring a woman of valor and comes from the book of Proverbs. We would like to share a poem which is a modern interpretation of this ancient proverb and captures the essence of Amy Wald St. Pierre. A woman of valor makes the world change. Her strength is the content that guides through the days, defined by her actions that bring light to all dreams. Valor is something that's defined by her deeds. Her valor is golden, sparkled and stunning. She stands up to any challenge, no matter the way. It can't be held back or defined by her age. Yes, a woman of valor makes the world change. For valor is not hold, held by the young or the old, but by the deeds of the heart that give and unfold. It's merit and honor that hold no disguise, like the creation of being in the maker's eyes. For valor is the color of the song of her soul as she changes, creates, and turns light into gold. Divine is her presence, be it joyous or sad. A woman of valor offers all that she has. For only her heart will know the depths of her soul that nurtures and blossoms and forever unfolds and holds in its essence new life and new gain. Yes, a woman of valor makes the world change. May, May her, her memory, memory always, always be a blessing. We, we love, love you forever, forever Amy. Amy. There are red threads that run through each of our lives, things that are consistent about us, what we like, 
how we treat people, what we do with our time, how we navigate the world around us. For some people, it takes a long time to see the threads. Sometimes we can only see the values someone holds when we look back. Sometimes they aren't clear for years and years and years. But that was not the case with Amy. It did not take decades for her to figure out who she was and what was important to her. I didn't have the good fortune to know Amy, but I've had the privilege of getting to know her this week through the eyes of the people who love her the very most. As I listen to her family talk about her in today, listening to her friends and colleagues, there are such clear red threads that tie all the parts of her life together. I can see them, and I know you can too, these values that shine out of Amy's life. In 38 years, far too few, to be sure, she left no time wasted. Amy knew who she was, and you all knew too. She knew what she was passionate about, and you all knew too. She knew how much she loved her family and treasured you. She knew how people, all people, should be treated, how their lives should be made better by sharing time and talent and treasure. And she knew that if she believed the world could be better, she had the responsibility to make it so. As we've just heard from her family and friends and colleagues, Amy lived these values all the time in the big ways and in the small matters of the day-to-day, -day, especially on text threads, as it turns out. <laughs> she was the same in any context, so we don't have to wonder what mattered to her. We don't have to guess at what she believed. We can see the threads in Amy's life and the way that she and Julian have made their marriage and home and put down deep roots in their community and the way they're raising their precious children to love learning and to really see others. From riding a bike to marching for justice, Amy took responsibility for making the environment cleaner, for making our systems more equitable. Her devotion to others is a theme we keep hearing because she was actually devoted to the well-being of others. She listened when people talked not thinking ahead to what she would say next, but showing the person in front of her that she cared what they had to say. Julian told me this week that she only wanted deep connections, not superficial chats. When she traveled, she tried to learn a place and know its people. She wanted her life to reflect the value of equity, so she worked tirelessly to improve maternal mortality and to touch its roots in systemic racism and generational poverty. She used her resources to create resources for others. If only our world were full of people whose red threads are devotion to others, love of family, curiosity, humor, and commitment to justice. The violence that took Amy's life will never make sense. There is nothing sensible or understandable about it. But that violence is not Amy's story. As much as we all hate it, that violence cannot change or tarnish or cancel the love Amy showed or the life she lived. Amy's life is now, has always been, and will always be a gift. One that blessed each of you and more people watching. A life that blessed people who didn't even know Amy. People who have more opportunity and better chances at health because of her work. A life that blesses people who have read about her in the last 10 days and are giving thanks for her from afar. Even while we lament that it was too short, we celebrate this gift of life. We pledge together to remember it, to honor it. 
We see the grace that has been woven into our lives because of Amy and the chance we have as a community to offer each other that grace now. We will keep talking about Amy. We will stick with the Walds and the St. Pierre's, even if you're tired of us. We will keep telling her story and celebrating her goodness. And we will take responsibility for making this world better, just as she did, cleaner, healthier, safer, more loving, more just, more peaceful. As we turn over the tapestries of our own lives, may we see the red threads that connect us to these values and to this remarkable woman we remember today. May it be so.
Friends, we go from this place with hearts full of grief and gratitude all at once, longing for more time, but celebrating the blessing of the memory of Amy's good, good life. May we reach out in love to one another, sustaining each other and offering grace. And may we all go in hope today and in the days to come, hope that we can model love, care for others, build community, and work for the kind of world Amy believed is possible. We give thanks for Amy Wald St. Pierre. I invite you to stand now as you're able.